music in this introduction was written over a hundred years ago by Jose Correa. He wrote it especially for the procession of Santo Entierro, which is um, on Good Friday at about five or six o'clock. You know, what makes Semana Santa so interesting is that it is a, a religious experience, but it also is telling the story, the history, and the traditions of San Miguel. There are events happening all over um, Mexico during this period of time, but the one here in San Miguel is very special, and there'll be thousands of people that will actually be coming here to town to see it because they are so very beautiful. You know, some of these events are over 300 years old, so they're very special and you're in for a real treat. You know, the purpose of this lecture is to give you some knowledge so that, for one thing, you're going to be able to make some choices as to what events you're interested in or which ones you maybe are less interested in. But um, more than anything, it's so that you can ob observe these events with an educated eye. There's actually a saying in Spanish, it's el que no sabe es como el que no ve. Basically that means that if you don't know what you're seeing, it's as if you're not seeing anything. So uh, we'll be going through the various events during this lecture. Not all of them, but some of them and some of the most um, oldest of the events. Um, the information, by the way, was uh, I obtained through interviews through three uh, men that were deeply religious men, and they talked about the spiritual aspects as well as the, the details of the events themselves. Um, and I look back at those interviews now with, uh, with great regard since two of them have since died. So let's go forward and we'll learn a little bit about Semana Santa and San Miguel. It started with this image. This was in the days of film, and when I saw this image appear from my development tank, I was entranced. The image stayed with me, and um, I decided I wanted to find out where they store these angels since they didn't appear in the churches, and they're only out for a few days during Semana Santa. So I went on a search for the angel storeroom, and it led me to this man. This is Luis Perez who actually had a small hardware store on the small the street in front of the oratorio. Little did I know when I met him that he was the actual organizer of the huge procession of 1,500 plus people uh, for Santo Entierro on Friday night. But at the time, um, we met and he introduced me to the Angel's storeroom by unlocking the door in the special key. Here is the actual lock that uh, unlocks the door in the um, Oratorio Church to the Angel Storeroom. There is an actual key that fits in this strange looking device and opens up the door. You can imagine my surprise when he opened the door and here were the angels, not covered by sheets or anything else, but simply plastic bags over their heads. Um, Senor Perez gave me complete access to the, take as many pictures as I wanted of this storeroom plus other storerooms with other articles having to do with um, Semana Santa and Santo Entierro. And uh, it was quite, quite the adventure. It led me to ask him, who made these? And he said, well, these were made in the 60s when the town of San Miguel decided they wanted to have a more exciting and elaborate processional. And they hired San Miguel's local saint maker, Hanaro Almanza, to create these statues. So my next adventure, of course, was um, how would I interview Hanaro Almanza? And I did find him eventually and interviewed him. And between these two men, um, I gathered the information that I put in my book and that I'm going to be giving you here today. In the 1800s, San Miguel actually had a school of saint makers. And Hanaro's father, Donato, apprenticed at this school. 
He then taught his sons the craft. When I commented to um, Don Genaro on the emotional quality of his statues, he explained to me that he was taught to create images that engage the public so that they would have an emotional experience and would become involved with the scene as participants instead of just watching. I want to interject here that I am not of any particular religious persuasion. Instead, I'm just curious to understand what's happening. So basically, I'm offering you these concepts as my ideas of what I think is the purpose of these statues and what I've learned. However, I have uh, talked to my Mexican friends and they seem to say that um, I'm, I'm right on. So this idea of suffering became a constant question I had as I was creating the book. Why is there this emphasis on suffering? Well, then a close family member became very sick and I was the primary caregiver, and the person was in great pain. What became very apparent in these days of turmoil was how I had spent so much of my time in the trivia inside of my mind of, you know, what's, is this okay, is this not okay, do they like me, do they not like me? This was not worth my time. What was worth my time was my friends, my family, and my loved one. I would say that compassion and caring became my life. So you could say, I got it. Now, I'd like you to look at the faces of these people that are watching the passing of the suffering statues. They are allowing themselves to feel the compassion for these symbols of pain and suffering. You could say Hinaro Almanza statues were actually doing their job. Now, with my understanding, um, the primary message of Jesus is compassion for one another. So that's why you see him pointing at the heart. You'll see Mary and images of Mary with the same thing, pointing at a heart. So I invite you to allow these images to open your hearts to each other during this Semana Santa se season. And you'll get more out of Semana Santa than you bargained for. The events of Semana Santa actually begin two weeks before Easter Sunday. And they begin in Atotonilco with the Entrada del Señor de la Columna. Um, Atotonilco is located, oh, about seven miles from San Miguel, and this amazing town is certainly worth a visit, but especially during Semana Santa because of the beginning of this procession that will take place on Saturday night. It was created by Padre Felipe Neri de Alfaro. He was born in the 1700s and created this church which is a basically a teaching mechanism, as are the processions. This is the time when many people were illiterate, and the way these priests would teach Bible stories would be through either murals, paintings, or reenactments, which is what most of Semana Santa um, consists of. And we'll see here um, on the, the ceiling of the church, um, which, by the way, is... All of the murals are specifically uh, about the days, the last days in the life of Jesus. Here we see Judas getting, giving Jesus the kiss with the Roman soldiers to identify him um, as the one that they want to arrest. But this church has a very special statue, which is Señor de la Columna. He's associated with a plague that was healed in the early 1800s. And he, along with two other statues, are prepared for their midnight walk into San Miguel. As you can see here, they've taken the statue down from his nicho. Um, the people are singing and watching this whole procession and beginnings of the preparations with great awe. They cover the statues, the three of them, with silk scarves which um, the people have donated 
and then they cover them with also these linen covers and bring them out at midnight. They have a mass and then they begin their all night walk into San Miguel. During this time, they'll be singing the whole way and we'll see them. Um, they actually take quite a brisk walk as they bring the statues into San Miguel. In the meantime, the um, people of San Miguel are preparing the street of Independencia where they will arrive at around um, five o'clock in the morning with, with fireworks. And of course, they'll be singing. The band is playing Christus Factus Est in preparation for the statues that are going to be coming down into Pendencia. This is the same music that we heard at the beginning of the slideshow. They've prepared coffee and cinnamon tea for the pilgrims that have been walking all night. And everyone is craning to see the statues as they, they appear with their haunting robes. Of course, now at the top of Independencia, they'll be taking the robes off and preparing the statue for their trip down into San Miguel. By the way, the street is covered, I mean, is filled with, um, with pilgrims and people that are watching. Um, it is something to, to get up early for and see. And here we see the uh, disrobed statues as they are whisked down the street. At the same time, um, who ha they have been doing this all night, is we hear the, the pilgrims that have walked and they've sung the whole way down, um, down the, the trip from Atotonilco. And the whole procession ends at the church of, of San Juan de Dios, and that's where they will be um, for the next couple of weeks until they are finally returned to Atotonilco the Wednesday after Easter Sunday. The next event is El Viernes Dolores. Um, this is the Friday before Good Friday. It is actually my very favorite of the um, events that happened during Semana Santa, and it is to honor Mary in her grief. We will see that people are actually, as we see here, um, this beautiful statue of the grieving Mary. People open up their homes, their driveways, their living rooms, and make altars within their homes and invite the public in to view them. Um, we'll see everything from these simple doorways such as this to more elaborate um, this is a whole living room that has sand paintings and they have taken out all the furniture and made this beautiful um, altar to Mary. Um, we'll see things that are maybe more whimsical, which is this, um, and again, they're using statuary and pictures that are in their homes. Very simple house, but they've made this beautiful altar that they've used um, statues that maybe they've inherited from their grandparents. And then we see, um, this is at Senor Perez's house, these life-size statues that are mobile and each year are slightly different. They put them in different positions, but uh, this is one of the most popular altars of the um, entire Viernes Dolores. And this, by the way, starts at around 6.30 or so, all to honor Mary in her grief. Of course, our next event is El Domingo de Ramos, or Palm Sunday, which uh, we're more familiar with in the United States, but what we're not familiar with is the beautiful palms that have been woven. These are done usually by specialists from other parts of Mexico. People come from Michoacan, which has a tradition of um, palm weaving. There'll be two processions. The first one starts on the street of San Francisco with Jesus coming in um, on a burrow with Mary Magdalene. The second one is from Juarez Park and you'll see of course the priests that will be blessing all the palms as the pilgrims walk down the street. We'll see the young and old and it will end up at the uh, parochia church. 
where there'll be a mass and the statues will be waiting outside. There are many events going on. On Wednesday will be the procession of Golpe, which is basically the whipped Christ, and you'll see him going through the the streets, starting at actually at the oratorio, but he does go by the parochia. But what is particularly beautiful um, with this procession are the altars that are made along the streets um, near the oratorio, and these are done by neighborhoods, and you'll see them in the afternoon on Wednesday decorating them. There'll be um, many children and women that will bring objects of the crucifixion through the streets as well. This is followed up then on Thursday night for the Night of the Altars. And here the, the idea is to visit seven churches so that you'll have luck through the year. And each of the churches have beautiful um, altars that have been decorated especially for this um, event and you'll see people lining up. Uh, they'll buy various objects that have to do with um, with the Easter season. We are now Good Friday and this has two major processions. I recommend that you do them both. This one starts at around 11 o'clock. Get there a little early, half an hour. Um, it's a beautiful procession, and it's organized by Ruben Viasana, who is one of the other men I or, um, interviewed for the, my book on Semana Santa. Um, he has also incredible amount of knowledge about the history of San Miguel. Starts with Pontius Pilate and the judging of Jesus, and then it begins from the uh, Santo Escuela church, which is San Rafael, next to the parochia, with the priest going through the streets, taking the part of Jesus. Following him are the penitents with um, hair shirts and crowns of thorns. Of course, the children will be singing Christus Faustus Est. Um, it's a pretty amazing procession, and it has this one particular statue, which is a really important statue to know about because of what he's associated with and what he actually does. This particular statue is Esi Omo or the Judge Jesus, but he is also known as the Rain God. He will be traveling through all these different churches, which is on this poster, to help bring on the rains. Um, so the, the Catholic and the old religions have joined together, in particularly in this particular statue. There are also um, the statue of Veronica, and then beautiful will be Mary, who is brought out because she's going to meet up with Jesus in front of the parochia church. Notice how he, this statue of Jesus has his head in the upright position. That's because it's movable. And they pull this rope underneath the statue. And as he looks at his mother, he looks up three times. The crowd is hushed. It's an incredible experience. And the granddaddy of them all, El Santo Entierro. It's a funeral procession for Jesus. This is the one you must not miss and get there an hour early. Notice this is an invitation to participate. It's the 289th procession, and this was several years ago. The way is marked with these purple flags, and it begins with Christ. This procession comes from the Oratorio Church, also, it has the soldiers, the Roman soldiers, who um, will be in procession and very slow with a beat and a whistle. Um, the little girls will be coming out, with the wimp followed by the women. Um, beautiful, very solemn. Everyone is instructed to be serious. They'll be singing again, Christus Factus Est. And you'll see um, various women that have white gloves and um, are walking through the streets carrying the palaquins with the women. Um, talk about penitence. Try walking through the streets of San Miguel with these shoes on. And you'll see, the, of course, these beautiful statues um, of the angels. 
And this is the stop and go light of the procession. One side is purple, the other side is white, because this is the day before cell phones. So in order to tell the procession when to stop and when to go, they would turn these candelabras to know that and it's they're throughout the procession. Then finally, the men come out and they have the interned Christ. These are some of the most important and oldest families in San Miguel that are represented here that are carrying the entombed Jesus. And of course, then is Mary, there's Dolores, and um, she comes at the very end Saturday, we have the procession of Soledad on Saturday evening, um, which is a beautiful, small procession, only goes around one block, starts from the Oratorio Church. The only statue involved in this is this beautiful statue of Mary in her grief. Um, lots of women do this. It uh, has a candlelit mass beforehand. And then on Sunday morning, we'll see with the sunrise, um, all the churches and the altars will have the risen Christ statue that will be presented. But at noon, which is interesting, we have a little um, break uh, because it's time to blow up Judas. So we'll have these paper mache statues that they will be hanging um, right at the far end of the Hardeen. And you'll see they have uh, various Political figures sometimes are represented here, and these paper mache statues are lit on fire, and then they blow up. And, of course, um, the kids then will run in and get various parts as good luck. Should you want to know more details, you'll find these posters are on the outside of most of the churches that will give you the details on when and where various major processions are held. So this has been our very brief but overview of the amazing events that are going to be happening during Semana Santa. I hope this has been helpful for you, gives you a, just a vague overview of what's going on. Certainly look Keep checking out the churches. There's preparations that are happening all week before Semana Santa. And if you'd like to read more, you're welcome to get my book, Tears from the Crown of Thorns. It's for sale in the back. Thank you so much for coming and enjoy this time.